Lebanon, who has been um, a dear friend for a long time and um, very passionate about economic development not only in Thailand, but also in Malaysia. And there's so many friends here. Uh, I, I, if I start mentioning, they'll miss a few. Um, Kun Pai Roch is here. Can see too clearly, but could, and and uh, I'm of course very touched by the sentiments expressed. And uh, in the short period, in this one or two days, uh, I've seen so much, uh, you know, friendship and um, cordiality that would uh, hopefully translate into a stronger, meaningful bilateral exchanges and not only in trade investments and but also in cultural field well i'm i'm a bit uh, sentimental i mean uh, in, in a way that uh, to me uh, diplomatic uh, encounters uh, countries or even in politics and governance is about uh, humanity and compassion. Um, so if you talk about um, ASEAN in this future, it's about the people of ASEAN, they have a billion, not the prime minister, the presidents. It, it's about how we craft a new agenda for the future that will be able to alleviate from the problems of the poor, uh, poor governance in some areas, and put ASEAN into new heights. Um, I must uh, not neglect the fact that I have very prominent colleagues here. Uh, Foreign Minister Zamri is here, uh, Home Affairs Minister Saifuddin, and um, Nick Nazmi, uh, Minister of Energy, the Secretary General of the Ministry of Home Affairs, uh, Foreign Affairs, and of course, uh, June Samuel, our ambassador. And most important to me personally is, of course, Aziza. <laughs> now, about bilateral relations, um, before I touch on ASEAN <clears throat> and the future of ASEAN, um, uh, Tanong put it uh, cogently and lucidly that um, the potential of uh, trade investments and bilateral relations has not been fully harnessed. And it's quite um, concerning. Why is it that among neighbors, Malaysia and Thailand has very good bilateral relations but not substantive in terms of its trade, investments, and exchanges between governments. Although between the people or the rakyat, you say, it has been phenomenal. I mean, the huge um, exchanges, um, and of course at the border, uh, but also in terms of tourism. Of And I was... Uh, pleased that yesterday in our meetings, and knowing uh, leaders like uh, Prime Minister General Payut, Deputy Prime Minister General Prawit, and Deputy Prime Minister Anutin, among others, I've seen that uh, commitment and eagerness. And um, in the exchanges that we had between um, both uh, leaders, I mean, that whole team yesterday, um, it is quite extraordinary, very friendly, very frank, and some of the concerns are expressed um, very clearly, um, including the concern about uh, the peace initiative and efforts in the South. Uh, I've said yesterday, um, my position is categorical, not uncompromising in terms of zero tolerance for violence in the South. And um, you will take, therefore, greater efforts 
from our friends and the Muslims in the South and the establishment here, particularly the army, to try to resolve this issue amicably. This is purely an internal issue affecting Thailand. Uh, but as friends, as family members, we have been uh, at least asked to try and facilitate the process. And um, we are prepared to do that in a more meaningful way. What are the concerns? The concerns, of course, the concerns of any minority, their language, their religion, their culture, and the trust deficit. And what about the concern in Bangkok? Is because of the skirmishes and the sporadic violence from time to time. Both are perpetrated by a minority, but also sometimes the reaction, which uh, was considered to be overreaction. But these issues are not really uh, that contentious in the sense that it could not be resolved. I've seen and talked to uh, leaders here who are quite passionate and determined to resolve. And I think uh, we have to persuade our friends in the South. Some of them I know personally, have interacted, must be persuaded to understand that they are part and parcel of the Thai community and nation. They may preserve their rights in their culture, religion, or language, as I, in my political philosophy, have tried to do in Malaysia. Malaysia is a multiracial, multi-ethnic, multi-religious country. And I want to present this new narrative to Malaysia that every single citizen must be recognized, their rights, their belief, and must feel they are part and parcel of this great Malaysian nation. So it is not something inconsistent. And I think this is the spirit, in, essentially, in ASEAN. You have produced leaders like um, Tanat Koman. We had Tun Razak those days, and Adam Malik in Indonesia, among others, who had that foresight about ASEAN, which to me is remarkable. I mean, I'm, I've been in politics a long time. I've read quite a bit. And, uh, um, he, Thai history, uh, Philippines from Jose Rizal and the colonial period and Malaysia's Indonesia, of course. But it's um, um, remarkable that we can actually produce great statesmen of vision for the region. Though ASEAN has not matured as a, an entity, and Dr. Tano made correct reference that particularly um, he is um, a banker. So in terms of financial trade investment, you can see this deficit. But in terms of uh, his um, vast achievements in peace, security, and good neighborhoodness, that is unprecedented internationally or globally. So I think we in the present generation and the future generation must take cognizance of, fact, of that and try to relieve the initial spirit, the idealism, and the forthright, uh, foresight in the, um, among the leaders of that generation and work beyond that. Uh, unfortunately, we have to deal with this semi-turbulence or in Myanmar. Yesterday, I appealed to Prime Minister Prayut because you have to face the major brunt because the, of the border with Myanmar. But we in Malaysia have to face a major problem of close to 200,000 refugees, most of them Rohingya, some from other ethnic uh, groups from Myanmar. Of course, uh, we say engagement. We've been engaging for the last 40 years. Um, but there's a limit that countries can do. But I believe, and I've talked to President Jokowi of Indonesia, who's now uh, 
chairman of ASEAN, talked to General Prayut, Prime Minister Sien Loong, and the Sultan of Brunei. And hopefully in the next week or so, uh, with uh, President Bombong Marcos. I call him Bombong, I don't know whether there's a correct diplomatic name. I mean, I'll be guided by the foreign minister. There's also the problem yeah, of not using notes. <laughs> now, uh, just to appeal to them that we have to go beyond. We don't want outsiders to interfere. Right? We don't want the United States or uh, Europe to tell us what to do. But we have to do something. We have to be uh, courageous enough to try and resolve this. Um, well, they say it's internal affairs of uh, Myanmar. Why right? I don't think we should go and interfere and, and <laughs> enter into a battle with them. But it's affecting us. It's affecting Thailand, huge number of refugees, affecting Bangladesh, who's struggling to uplift the economy, and Malaysia, which has the largest number of refugees from Myanmar. Uh, I'm junior at the game, among the leaders of ASEAN in terms of uh, responsibility and, age, and or not age uh, and, and experience, then I have, of course, appealed to them and would seek their wisdom and guidance in trying to resolve this. But this is, of course, a negative sign, a uh, block in the whole ASEAN move in dealing with the future. We are stuck with the past. We're stuck with the atro uh, issue of atrocities. We're stuck about the issue of discrimination and intolerance and uh, gross injustice. And uh, having said that, we should still go beyond. And this is what I believe ASEAN leaders must reflect upon in the this year and the years ahead. I've said there were initiatives. I remember Kun Supachai from Thailand, a good colleague who was so determined to make sure he pushed ahead the trade agenda amongst the ASEAN nations. Uh, I think finally he was quite frustrated. Finally, he went to WTO <laughs> and, and did reasonably well there. And um, he had that, that foresight, as I said, to say, yes, we inherit a phenomenal uh, uh, success uh, in ASEAN collaboration. But we must go beyond. It's about economy. It's about connectivity. It's about digitalization. It's about new investments is about using and uh, having this as an imp important base for the great powers economically, both for China or United States. It is unfortunate that we have to grapple with the problem of tensions between China and United States. Very little we can do other than making sure that we remain fiercely independent whilst engaging well with China and the United States, and benefiting in terms of new investments, new facility, which would uh, positively affect the vast majority of our people. So ASEAN FTA and all the other initiatives, which has been ongoing, I mean, the foreign minister seems very concerned because he thinks I'm not. I'm too critical of ASEAN. No, I'm not critical of ASEAN. I am acknowledging the vast uh, su success, but I'm just trying to push this issue of uh, trade and investment um, by using this comparative advantage of countries. Well, those days we compete against each other. If there's a country producing cars in Thailand and Malaysia car and uh, Indonesian car and uh, we compete with each other. We can't even think of someone should um, produce uh, lorries and the other one bus or the other 
a car. We can't think in that direction because we are fiercely independent and in the event protectionist. Um, so I think going beyond because there are new areas where we can um, ensure that uh, we would benefit. Because this relates to the issue of paradigm and technology. And the issue of paradigm and technology means that these new areas must be fully harnessed. We are still lagging behind. I mean, Malaysia is, of course, I mean, in that sense, comparatively, Thailand is more successful. I mentioned in food technology, in digitalization, in the modernization of the energy sector. And I think we would uh, work together and benefit also from your uh, pl plan, new investments, which I will personally uh, ensure that is given the desired support. We had, of course, the Chiang Mai initiative on um, trying to have an, uh, new arrangements in the financial sector. Uh, Tanong even referred to the ASEAN, uh, Asian uh, Monetary Fund, which we thought could be a buffer. We cannot have the international financial infrastructure decided and determined by one corner of the earth. We will have to work with them, uh, but we should have our own domestic, regional, and Asian strength. Not to necessarily compete, but only to have a, like a buffer zone. Um, and from those uh, of us who had uh, some experience dealing with it, it would help immensely. You know, every time there is a sign of a uh, problem brewing, even those days, we immediately have a session and start politely cautioning each other when we look at the balance of payments. We look of, uh, for example, the issue of uh, the fall of the currency. I mean, issues like that, immediately our friends must be alerted and sometimes cautioned. Because sometimes you are also faced by your own internal domestic uh, pressures and politics. Uh, those days, of course, we are ruled by uh, somewhat authoritarian leaders. Uh, and, and the finance ministry, of course, the most unpopular in the uh, cabinet. Uh, that's the reason why temporarily I'm holding the finance portfolio. <laughs> so, that, so that my colleagues will not be too rough against the Minister of Finance because the Prime Minister was there. Uh, but notwithstanding what I've said, the proposal, the ASEAN plus three, which is uh, somewhat uh, related to the initial proposal on the Asian Monetary Fund. It should be revised in the context and the demands and the dictates of the period, uh, which it should include in Japan, China, South Korea, um, or if they would like to include Australia, India, I have uh, no strong views on that. Uh, I will have to respect and build a consensus among ASEAN. So I am still optimistic with the future of ASEAN. We should carve Myanmar out for now. And I don't think the Myanmar issue should uh, frustrate our moves. It would be ideal if we could have just a strong consensus in, in, in uh, giving a strong message to the Myanmar regime. You have every right to have your own domestic policies and priorities. But no country in these times should ever continue with discriminatory policies, marginalization of their people, or intimidating, or worse, perpetrating violence against their own people. <laughs> so hopefully, that, that position has been taken. To be fair, ASEAN has, although in the diplomatic nuances, have repeatedly stated this position. And, and uh, 
but to no avail. And, but ASEAN is also mindful that they don't want other regions to be dictating. So there is a, not necessarily contradiction in terms, but that should be taken as a challenge. If we don't want others to interfere, then we will have to promote, suggest new mechanisms to make sure that these atrocities, atrocities perpetrated, perpetrated against their own people must end. I mean, first, we don't tolerate them. Secondly, the repercussions is affecting the whole of ASEAN. And I said, I mean, even beyond ASEAN, like Bangladesh, um, it is not just Malaysia, Thailand, in terms of refugees. Indonesia is facing that issue now. But in conclusion, I would say that to me, um, we have... Uh, achieved some remarkable results. But for Malaysia, um, as I have uh, said uh, yesterday in my uh, remarks to our Malaysian diaspora in Thailand, we will have to grapple with problems of good governance, reading the country of endemic corruption, and to give meaning to what uh, we believe and understand as democratic accountability. Democracy, to us in Malaysia, is not about elections, per se. Democracy is about accountability. Leaders are not only accountable once in four or five years to their people. Leaders are accountable to the mandate, to the spirit of the constitution, and to the to, to honor the promise to the people that they are supposed to lead a clean government that will use resources to champion, to promote the economy, propel the economy, yes, but to ensure there's justice for all its citizens. And I think that is a major challenge in Malaysia. Yes, um, yeah mentioned about the tribulations of the past, but I think, uh, as you said, I'm talking about the future of ASEAN. So if Anwar comes here talking about the past, mm, a lot of story to say, but uh, as Mandela used to say, we must forgive and move on. But we should not forget, because that should teach us and the people that any injustice should not be tolerated. Uh, I've learned the hard way. The tribulations is not easy. It was easy to say. I was here last few years to launch uh, the book by uh, Leonard Quinn's Council about the annual trials. Um, even then, I refrained from dwelling too much about the past and to say that we have to learn from that experience how the enforcement agencies can be compromised, how even the judiciary can be uh, complicit or working at the behest of the executive. We must make sure there is rule of law, democratic accountability, and to ensure that the economy it must be uh, propelled, not to serve the interests of a few, but to serve the interests of the majority of our people. So let me thank you again to the Kani Tanong, the Malaysia Thai Chamber, for giving me this opportunity. It's always, I'm always happy to be back here in Bangkok and um, I must apologize in the short trip. I'm not able to meet all, but please be assured that you have in me, personally in Malaysia, a true friend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. Thank you very much for sharing with us your experience and perspective on numerous issues, ranging from 
Thai-Malaysia relationship, how we should foster better relations and improve trade and investments, and all the way to ASEAN, reminding us to still be optimistic and yet having a very clear standpoint about what to do with Myanmar. And also thank you for reminding us to learn from the past in order to pave the way for a better future. So next would be 